Hello everybody, it's SSD Mad Haven here today, and I have a match for you. Now, light tanks, there are lots of ways to play a light tank. Especially on Melanovka, Prokhorovka, Westfield, and many other maps. But today, we're going to be showing off a match on Prokhorovka. Now, Prokhorovka, I've mentioned in the past that if you take over the one line, you win every single match. Now, when everything works out and your team is there for you and they are on dot, magical things can happen. Now, right off the bat, you guys probably noticed there's a little cursor down at the bottom right of the screen. That is because I am playing with mouse and keyboard right now. I've been giving it a run a lot. And so far on update 6.0, I'm really enjoying mouse and keyboard. The UI that they implemented in the game, compared to the last one, mouse and keyboard is working out really well. So if you guys want to try out a mouse and keyboard setup, go right ahead. It's been helping out a lot. They also have a button mapping system. So far I have not found out how to change any of the button, button mapping. But whenever I do, I will let you guys know. So Prokhorovka, whenever I'm going up the one line, there's a couple of positions that you can hit right off the bat and then just kick it. Kick back. Play slow, stay calm, and collected. So a lot of light tanks in Prokhorovka like to go up to center area and just pop up and do some spotting. Now, the reason why I don't do that inside my light tanks is because occasionally we'll have heavy tanks going around F5, F6, and then they'll be popping up to give out spotting as well. Meaning, if I'm in a light tank... I should be taking the left side of the map, down the 1 and 2 line, using all of the foliage to my advantage, and then just waiting and sitting back to spot out everything that's coming up. And as you guys have noticed, look at the map. Everyone is on the left side. We're missing maybe four tanks in total. But still, there's ten of us on mm -hmm. this side. And right off the bat, we're already getting a ton of assist damage, already up to 1,176. Now, the bush right here in G1, this is a very, very strong position. And it's also a pretty well-known position. So, occasionally, you want to be a little careful. Because sometimes you'll get blind fired at. And since we're bottom tier, you know, it's going to take a single high explosive from a 152 to knock us out. Or to get spotted with all the accuracy buffs that tanks have right now to get pinpointed from over 500 meters away. So I'm getting ready to bolt out if I need to, which is the whole reason why we angled the tank to line up. Now, the 705A, he's getting real close. We just, yep, there it is, and throttle it. Now, keep in mind, Prokhorovka, that downed plane right there, Try to avoid the wing to the best of your ability. You will get stuck on it if you are driving down from G1. And as we look over, we see a lot of tank destroyers. Now, I had to fall back because I got spotted out. So the best thing is, is to kick back and wait for the opportunity to push back up again. Because your team is going to need that spotting. So the 705A is a tank that they're going to want to be... Focusing out, take him down. The second he's down, we're going to want to push back up. Now, both teams, there's only one light tank. The other light tank was trying to scout out the middle, which there was almost no point to be scouting out the middle because no one was there. They physically could not spot anybody because of all the foliage in the background. So, pushing back up to the position in G1. And we're already up to 5,200 assisted damage. Prokhorovka, this is one of those maps that you need to have a slow-paced play style. If you're rushing up, you're, you're not going to be prepared against tanks to have got extreme camouflage ratings and everything else. Now, right there, I pinned the map, I pinged it, letting everyone know I am pushing up to the bushes in E1. So now, if you look at the map, the rest of the team, they saw the ping, they see that I'm pushing up, they're starting to follow up behind me, and I made a little bit of a mistake right there. I should have just 
pulled up to the bushes that were on the farther left rather than trying to knock down the tree. So I got punished down the 358 hit points. So just waiting to get despotted. The second that we're despotted, we want to get back into that position as quick as we can. And this time, thinking about it, it's like, well, we're not going to be taking any more risks to try and increase the camouflage rating. And then again, with 260 still concealment, which is actually almost 40% camouflage rating, or about 50% camouflage rating, there's not much to really worry about. Just kick it behind a bush, have a little bit of patience. There's no point in rushing up trying to spot out multiple. And as a light tank, you can have a massive impact on the game. Every single game. Positioning and the rest of the team. Massive, massive difference. And matches like this here in Prokhorovka... They don't happen too often. These are maybe one in a thousand games I see this actually happen. So this is a pretty rare occurrence here on console. On PC, though, it's almost every single day you'll see it. And for the 268, we wanted to take him down as quick as we could, so... He's off in the distance. We know we're a little bit safe back here. So we took our two shots and knocked out the 268. Now... Pushing up, there's more bushes up here on the right side. Just follow along the uh, side stretch right here. Slow down if you need to. Spotting out the artillery and lighting up the M103. And as we pulled up, we were spotted out because there's a little bit of an opening. But we can easily fall back right below the ridge line. Now, as a light tank player, whenever I pull out my light tanks, I always try my absolute best to make sure that my team has spotting, that I'm concealed, I try to last the entire match. Don't get me wrong, sometimes, you know, we make mistakes and we pull out too far and we get punished for it. So far, I have been punished, but the punishment wasn't as severe as it could have been. I could have died, I could have been knocked out early in the match. And then had a lot of problems for the rest of the team because they still have a light tank active. But their light tank fell all the way back, which allowed us to take over the entire one flank. So, if their light tank would have came back to support them on the 1-2 line, the difference would have been tremendous. Um, my team probably would have been knocked out extremely fast because there was a bat chat artillery Along with that, there was also a T-92, and all of our tanks. On the bottom spawn, there, there's not much cover. On the top spawn, you can come up, pull over, and you got gun depression. You know, you got hauled down positions. On the back area, we have like three, four spots that are really good, and then you just have this giant drop-off that you have to drive up. So if their light tank would have tried to oppose me over on the right side, that would have made the biggest difference inside this match. But since he decided to go all the way around, all spotting on the right side was lost. And artillery for 1600. And whew, those are dirty shots. T92 is in the accuracy right now. Man, Yuki would be so proud of that guy. <laughs> And we aren't loaded in time, but with a total of 9,674 assisted damage, overall assist, no tracking, pure spot assist, passive playing with 1,011 damage caused and base experience of 1,673. And with a nice hefty profit of 150,000. Yeah, that's that's a profit. So, we did get the patrol duty. Along with that, we had cause more damage than the v <laughs> than the vehicle's hit points. We only have 1,000. 
and spot along with that first class mastery badge a little surprising it wasn't a mastery ace tanker well whenever you're playing a light tank just know there's multiple play styles you have an aggressive play style like i have inside the senlac but you can also have more of a passive role and sometimes the passive role can play the biggest effect Sure, you're not firing your gun all the time, which whenever you're not firing your gun, you feel like you're not doing much. But with a view range advantage and the concealment that light tanks get, it's always best to play a little bit passive. Sometimes it's nice to get really aggressive and rush on in and circle your opponents to death. But passive scouting is something you don't see too often. And I recommend you guys get out there, go nuts with your passive scouting. You know, it'll really help you. You won't spend as many as many credits every single match. Uh, along with that, it'll benefit the team more than it's going to benefit you. But in the end, it'll benefit you. Because if your win rate's low, passive scouting can skyrocket your win rate. As long as you know the positions to go to and you like to make nests. Small little nests that you make for a light tank right away. Like two trees in a bush, you're going to be undetectable. Now... Until next time, you guys have a fantastic day, fantastic night, whatever time you're watching this. Um, check out Noodle Tin over on Twitch. Definitely check him out. And I don't know about you guys, but I am a little excited for Season 4 to be coming out. I have absolutely no clue what's coming out, but I am ready. So if you liked the video, leave a like. Um, if there's conversation potential, I will try my best to reply as much as I can. And if you're not subscribed, seriously, get in there. It's like, I try my best to help you guys out as much as I can. Plus, with the Discord that we're doing now, after every single stream, I go inside general chat. So if you guys have questions and you actually want to talk verbally with me, get over on Discord. I will kick back and I'll have a conversation for a couple of hours on the weekends. So, until next time, see you on the battlefield.